Hi, this is Anand Shankar again, and I will be covering cluster and aggregate techniques to extract fixed dimensional representations from videos. Uh, this will include a technique that we've developed here at LinkedIn called smooth Gaussian mixture models. After I cover the, the, uh, that, we will have a short break, and then I will also be talking about speech recognition. So cluster and aggregate. What is cluster and aggregate techniques? It's essentially a family of unsupervised methods for computing fixed dimensional representations for a video. And we will talk about how this method works now. So the main idea of cluster and aggregate is to, instead of com uh, considering a video to be a sequence of frames, consider it to be a set of frames. So we ignore the time order in a video and consider the set of the, I'm sorry, consider the sequence of frames as a set. So this is a very big assumption, obviously, but it turns out that it works reasonably well for applications like video classification. It wouldn't work well for action recognition because in action recognition, like does the hand move up or down, we do need to consider temporal order. But since processing frames is simpler than processing a sequence, because we don't, we can ignore uh, the time uh, uh, component in our model, it turns out to be a good approach for some tasks. So first, how do we consider, how do we represent the frames of the video for our cluster and aggregate technique? Each frame in the video is represented by a fixed dimensional vector, a d-dimensional vector, that we get from a deep CNN model, a deep convolutional neural network model. So once we have this d-dimensional vector for each of the frames, we can either consider them to be a sequence of d-dimensional vectors as a normal video would be, or a set of d-dimensional vectors as we would do in the case of cluster and aggregate. The uh, d-dimensional vectors are typically, or uh, d is typically of uh, uh, a number like 1024. So it's fairly large. And that's what we get from our deep CNN models such as Inception Network or AlexNet or any other deep CNN approach. Okay, so now we have our set of d-dimensional vectors for a given video. Say we have 100 d-dimensional vectors for a given video. How do we represent that video? So we start off by considering what we call a universal background model. So we haven't yet, we are not yet talking about how, how we represent a specific video here. We're talking about this background model that we have to have before we do the video representation. So the background model is simply a cluster model. It is trained using k-means clustering or a Gaussian mixture model uh, estimation. What we do is we take a whole collection of videos from a domain and take all the frames of those videos and use those uh, frames of the videos to do k-means clustering. And at the end of it, we will come up with k clusters where k might be, let's say, 256. So we have 256 clusters, each cluster being represented by its mean and its standard deviation. In the case of k means just the mean, in the case of Gaussian mixed models, the mean and the standard deviation. The black dots over here represent the means of each of these cluster centroids, and the Voronoi regions represent the domain, the, the region in which uh, all the points are closest to that mean, the mean of that specific uh, cluster. Now that we have these uh, clusters uh, uh, the, gotten using the k-means clustering or Gaussian mixture modeling, now that we have this UVM model, we can represent each video with respect to this UVM model. And the way that is done is this. For a given video, let us consider these yellow ellipses to be the data for that specific video. Some of the video's data will land in cluster number one, some might land in cluster number two, some may not land in any cluster, like cluster number, some of these clusters here do not contain any frames. However, cluster number one has 100 frames, cluster number two has one frame, cluster number three has 35 frames. So by computing some sort of statistics of these 100 frames, one frame and 35 frames, in other words, by computing these video specific statistics for each of these clusters, we will get a video specific representation. These video specific statistics, the way we compute these video specific statistics determine the uh, specific model that is being used to compute these features. One of the simplest approaches is to use a bag of words model. 
bag of visual words model, where what we do is the statistic that we use is simply the counts of the video for each cluster. In other words, we have 100 for cluster one, one for cluster two, and 35 for cluster three. This would give us a histogram over these 256 clusters. If we normalize this histogram by the number of frames for this video, then we get a probability density function of these clusters, a discrete probability density function of these clusters, or a normalized histogram of these clusters, which is represented uh, here as the bag of words model in this table. Instead of 100, we have 0.58 because we've divided by the total number of frames. So this is a very simple representation. It's a k-dimensional representation where k is equal to the number of clusters. In this case, k we said might be 256. The next approach we'll talk about is called vector of locally aggregated descriptors, which was originally uh, developed for images, but later also used for videos. Here, what we do is we aggregate, the aggregation we do is not simply the counts of the video's frame for a specific cluster, but we compute the mean of the video's frames for a specific cluster. So the mean is gonna be now a d-dimensional vector, right? Not only do we, com do we compute the mean, we subtract the cluster's mean from the video specific mean. So we get this residual of vector, which is the residual between the video specific mean for a cluster and the cluster specific mean for that cluster. That is given by this equation over here. So these arrows represent these residual vectors and that is called VLAD. VLAD also commonly does something called intra-norm, where we, for each of the clusters, we normalize these residual vectors using an L2 normalization. So we end up with vectors, residual vectors of the same length for each cluster, but they may be pointing in different directions, depending upon which direction, where the video's data is for a specific cluster. This technique also works uh, pretty well. Another approach is residual less VLAD, where we, it's just VLAD, but we remove the component of the, we remove, we remove the aspect of the cluster specific centroid. So we do not subtract the cluster specific centroid. We simply use the video specific means for each cluster as our representation. Now, in summary, what we've shown is how cluster and aggregate techniques work in an unsupervised fashion. We represent each video by its, by its video specific clusters uh, statistics with respect to, a, to the clusters of a UBM model. And the way we compute these statistics determines uh, what sort of feature is being extracted. If it's just the counts, it becomes a bag of words. If it's a residual vector, it becomes a VLAD. If it is a residual less vector, it becomes R VLAD. It turns out that one of the problems with these approaches is that when you have a small amount of data from for a specific cluster from a, from a given video, then that can result in noisy estimates. And we fix this uh, by an approach called smooth Gaussian mixture models or SGMM that we developed here at LinkedIn. So now let us describe how SGMM works. Again, it's a cluster and aggregate technique. So we have the same UBM model with the black dots representing our centroids and the yellow ellipses representing the data from a given video. Now, in the case of uh, SGMM, we are going to represent a video very similar to our VLAD. In other words, it's going to be the video specific cluster centroid. But instead of being the video specific cluster centroid, we can we use a representation that can be anything from the video specific cluster, uh, uh, from the video specific mean, I'm sorry, to the cluster specific mean. So the residual less uh, VLAD approach used the video specific mean for a given cluster as the representation. But here we're gonna use a vector that can be anywhere from the video specific mean to the cluster specific mean. So in the case of cluster number three, the vector might lie over here. In the case of cluster number two, we are much closer to the cluster specific mean. And in the case of cluster number one, we are much closer to the video specific mean. How close we are to the video specific mean versus the cluster specific mean is determined by a parameter called lambda. And lambda is gonna be close to one if we have a lot of data for a cluster. In other words, we will then get a representation which is equal to the video specific mean. 
and lambda will be small, it will be zero if we have very little data from the video for a given cluster, in which case we will use the cluster specific mean as the representation. So what this does for us is it does a form of smoothing. If you have a very small amount of data, we simply back off to the cluster specific mean. And if you have a large amount of data, we use the video specific mean. And this turns out to be more robust than previous techniques. Now we will show how smooth SGM, how SGMM is actually more robust. Let us consider two videos, a video number one and video number two. And let's pretend that these videos are pretty much the same thing. They represent the same concepts. Maybe it's the same exact video with some frames slightly different here and there. So uh, both of these videos contain a large amount of data in cluster number one in the same position. But for cluster number two, let's say that these videos have the data in various, in actually quite different positions. But because it's a very small amount of data, we can practically ignore it, right? So in the case of SGMM, the representation for cluster number two is going to be close to the cluster specific centroid because we have very little data. So it actually ignores the data. And in the case of cluster number one, we will have a representation which is again same because we, the data looks the same in cluster number one. Once we have done intra-normalization, we again get vectors which look very similar to each other. The direction is slightly different for cluster number two, but it's not very different. On the other hand, if we were to use VLAD, we will see far uh, very different uh, representations for video one and video two. Now we have a residual vector for cluster number one that looks the same as we would imagine, but the residual vectors for cluster number two are very different for the video on the left and the video on the right. They point in completely different directions. Now you might think that this is okay because rest, the residual vector for cluster number two is much smaller, so it's, we can ignore it. But actually, we also do the intra-norm as we talked about before. And when we do intra-norm, the residual vectors become the same length. So what happens now is that just a small amount of data in cluster number two can make these two videos, which otherwise are pretty much identical, to look very different. And this is the uh, aspect of, uh, that we fix by using smoothing in the SGMM approach. So in summary, cluster, unsupervised cluster and aggregate techniques ignore frame order and rely on a large amount of data to compute a UBM. And the UBM is then used to compute statistics for a specific video. And those statistics become the representation of that video. The representation of the, of, the, of the video can be a k-dimensional representation in the bag of words approach or a k times d-dimensional representation for VLAD and SGML. And this representation is then used in downstream tasks like video classification. One problem with these unsupervised techniques is that the feature extraction is not uh, being learned for a given downstream task. And that can be done if we if we do end-to-end -end training of the feature extraction, in other words, the cluster and aggregate feature extraction, if we do end-to-end -end training of that feature extractor, along with the downstream classifier, we can get a better uh, accuracy because we've done end-to-end -end training. And that is what's shown over here. On the left side, we have feature extraction happening separately and the video classifier, which might be any machine learning model like a neural network. We only train that model when we train the classifier However, on the right side, when we are training the classifier, we train not only the classifier, but also the feature extractor at the same time. And we get additional accuracy by doing that. This technique was developed first for VLAD by a technique, by a method called NetVLAD. So NetVLAD is essentially VLAD, but applied in an end-to-end -end fashion, which is what is shown in this picture. I won't go into the details of this, but essentially it's similar to the picture that I, that I showed in the previous slide. We have a cluster and aggregate component uh, module that is doing uh, VLAD. It, it outputs a K times D dimensional vector, followed by some uh, uh, projection down to a smaller size using, using this fully connected neural network. And then context gating is a technique that was, uh, that was uh, proposed in the NetVLAD paper to, do, to model the interdependencies between the feature components. They happen to use a mixture of experts model, which we represent here as MOE. And they also followed it up with context gating to model the prior uh, probabilities of the classes uh, in the YouTube 8 million task. NetVLAD 
was shown to actually perform very well. And it's the mainstay in the winning uh, techniques for the YouTube 8 million task. So we used a very similar approach. Instead of VLAD, we substituted VLAD with SGMM in this, in this end-to-end framework. And that resulted in a technique that we call DSGMM for deep, smooth, smooth Gaussian mixture models. And DSGMM is, this, is uh, similar to NetVLAD in that both of them are end-to-end -end techniques. So now we compared, we implemented DSGMM and NetVLAD, SGMM and VLAD, and compared all of these techniques on the YouTube 8 million classification task. The metrics that are used for this task are gap or global average precision and the hit at one. And as we can see in this table, both on the validation and test set, average pooling, which is obviously a very simple technique, very simply take the average of all the frames of a video and represent it by that. We get the worst accuracy, but VLAD and SGMM gave very similar uh, accuracies. NetVLAD was the best prior, prior to the DSGMM approach, but DSGMM showed a small but statistically significant improvement over NetVLAD on this task. So that is the end of the cluster and aggregate uh, uh, presentation and the smooth Gaussian mixture models. We'll take a short break now and we'll come back later with a description of speech recognition.